The video is updated version on previous video. The main purpose is to understand and help with most common outboard problems. All the information is based on many years of experience that I want to share with you. In my channel you can also learn how to fix or service your motor without experience in the easiest way. Before I go any further, I would like to invite those of you who haven't subscribed to Boat Motors channel to do so. I also want to thank those of you who have subscribed. Today I'm going to give you valuable information for outboard motors sold under the name of Ted Williams, Esca, Sears, Game Fisher, and other brands. Short Historical Facts In the 1960s Sears marketed a line of small horsepower outboard motors using the baseball player Ted Williams' name. These outboards were made by McCulloch and Esca through that period. Motors were sold under numerous brand names. Most hardware stores and some auto parts stores sold these outboards. Esca outboard motors went out of production in 1986. Engines continued being marketed with the 1986 model numbers until stocks were exhausted. By 1987 most all brand names were discontinued in favor of Game Fisher brand and these were all made by force from 1987 through 1996. It was at this time that Sears stopped selling outboard motors. The motors are sold in variety of 1 to 15 horsepower. The outer design may look different, but the internal parts are the same. Interesting fact is the internal gas tank will fit to all air-cooled models up to 7.5 horsepower motors, but 7.5 horsepower is coming out from the factory without internal gas tank, but can be added very easy. Some of the carburetor parts are the same in all models up to 15 horsepower. Very often people compare the engine to lawn mower, but it has nothing to do with it. The lawn mower is four-stroke and the outboard is two-stroke. The similarity is single horizontal fan air cooled cylinder. The outboard motor is very sensitive and sometime can act like stubborn donkey. I'm sure most of you can pull the recoil starter with variety of success to the moment when you give up with blisters on your hands. Here's the secret of these motors. Even the gravity feed is present from 3 to 7 horsepower the motor is dependent from a fuel pump integrated to the carburetor. The reason for this is the option to connect external gas tank, but in the reality this happens very rarely and most of the time motors are used only with the internal tank. Before I'm going in detailed review of the motors, I'm going to start with the weak part and this is the carburetor. The carburetor must mix air and fuel correctly to provide good engine performance. If something is not right the motor will not start, or start and stop in a few minutes. The most common problem from 3 to 15 horsepower motors is the little orange sleeve called fuel pump. Interesting fact is that even new fuel pump can fail any moment. Very often the issue is fuel flooded engine. The reason of this is cracked fuel pump. This can happen anytime and anywhere. The symptoms are, engine suddenly dies, strong gas smell, wet spark plug and in some cases fuel leak from the exhaust. Imagine yourself in the middle of the lake with bad fuel pump. The only way out is to fix the pump. In some models the access to the carburetor is very limited and will require engine cover disassembling. You will need tools, disposable gloves, some skills, new orange fuel pump in 30 to 45 minutes. If the engine worked well up to this moment don't touch the main mixture screw and idle speed knob. Here's how the fuel pump work. Outboard carburetors have a built-in fuel pump consisting of a fuel pump element which inflates and deflates with crankcase pulses which opens and closes two flap valves in the fuel pump thereby pumping fuel from an internal or remote tank to the carburetor float bowl. When replacing the fuel pump element, install with the slot opening at a 45 degrees angle as illustrated. As the engine's piston moves upward, a partial vacuum is created in the crankcase, which collapses the fuel pump element in the carburetor. On the outside of the element, Suction opens the inlet flap drawing a supply of fuel from the tank and lines into the cavity created by the deflating pump element. 
Suction pulls the outlet flap closed, sealing the outlet port so that fuel is not pulled from the area of the inlet needle and seat. On the downward stroke of the piston, crankcase pressure enlarges the pump element forcing fuel out of its cavity. This pressurized fuel acts against the outlet flap valve, opening it, allowing a head of pressurized fuel to be transmitted to the inlet needle and seat port. The inlet valve is pressed against the inlet port, sealing it so that pressurized fuel does not escape back into the fuel tank and lines. If everything going well and if you are able to replace the fuel pump and have some fuel left in the tank here is how to start the motor. Don't turn on the choke, the motor need to be ventilated. Full open the throttle and now you can pull the recoil starter. If by this time there are no blisters from this motor now you are going to get it. It may take more than 20 pulls to ventilate the flooded engine. At some moment the engine will sneeze and will start. Now you can continue to the end of your destination. There is some other issues with this carburetor but they are related to the idle speed. The movement is very lemmatized from the idle adjustment screws on the idle adjust rod from 3 to 7.5 horsepower. Compared to a Vinrood and Johnson on this motors you can pop out the knob and engage it in new position. With Ted Williams, Eska, Sears and Gamefisher this is not possible and will require tools and skills. By turning to left or right you are going to open or close the needle to carburetor casing. Small movement is big change in well working carburetor. Unfortunately this is not the end of the carburetor saga. The main jet in some models is adjustable and not everyone can do it. We can see the same situation with old Avinrut and Johnson motors. This option is going to disappear in late 70s from Johnson and Avinrut and will be replaced from fixed size jet. In some time Ted Williams, Eska, Sears and Gamefisher updated the jet in the carburetor, but the fuel pump will remain to damage the reputation. Now let's compare 7.5 horsepower with 4 horsepower Johnson. It is hard to believe low RPM engine with less than 100 cubic centimeters can provide 7.5 horsepower. I'm not sure how this 7.5 horsepower is calculated but if you have two identical boats one with Ted Williams 7.5 horsepower and the other with 4 horsepower Johnson and race it the Johnson will beat. There are multiple reasons for this but the main is the low RPM engine, gear ratio and propeller on 7.5 horsepower are not enough strong to provide good speed at top RPM. The high RPM on the Johnson with well calculated gear ratio and propeller can provide real 4 horsepower at high RPM. So for me the Ted Williams, Eska, Sears and Gamefisher are rated with mysteriously high horsepower coming from God knows how. The air-cooled single cylinder on the Ted Williams can provide high vibration on low speed and less on high RPM. Imagine how are you going to feel at the end of the fishing day with hand vibration and strong noise around you. Now imagine yourself with the well-balanced two-cylinder Johnson engine with less noise and better speed. The reliability is also very important if the Johnson fuel pump fail you don't need to replace it to continue your trip. The only thing you need to do is to squeeze the prime pump every 5 seconds to deliver fuel manually to the carburetor. Few words for the ignition. Believe it or not I never have any ignition problem with 3 to 7.5 horsepower motors. It is electronic type and if I have to compare it to other brands it is well done. The situation with water cooled 9 to 15 horsepower model is different. The ignition is known to make problems and is very expensive to be replaced. The Ted Williams 3 to 7.5 horsepower engine is air-cooled single cylinder. From time to time you can see leaking head gasket. The only frozen engine I've seen back in the time was a motor left abandoned for years under the rain. Most of the motors have bad gear clutch. This is very typical. The engine is permanently engaged with the lower unit. The impeller on 4 to 7.5 horsepower is responsible to provide cooling only for the exhaust chamber. If you need any parts in most situations you will find some engine gasket, carburetor rebuild kit, impeller and some seals. 
In conclusion, if the fuel pump issues are not existing and the engine is gravity fuel feed the motor is going to be reliable. The vibration and the noise can be compared to tractor engine which is going to work forever as long as you are able to start it. I want to invite those of you who haven't subscribed to the Boat Motors channel yet to do so. Thank you for watching the video.